uh, Proverbs 27. Uh, Proverbs 27. A righteous man who walks in his integrity. Again, Proverbs 27. A righteous man who walks in his integrity. How blessed are his sons after him. There's a lack of that, amen? amen. A lack of it right now in our society. Man, we have to rise up, amen? We have to rise up and lead as examples, amen? So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our speaker this morning. Uh, he's been coming to the brew line quite a while now, and you'll see him on social media, you know, giving, uh, speaking life to people, speaking life while he's driving. I mean, he's just speaking life. He doesn't, there's no boundaries for him, you know, he's just letting go. He's allowing the Holy Spirit to move on uh, wherever he's at. And uh, it's been a blessing to get, got to get to know him. And, um, and I just, I know he's going to be a blessing this morning. All I'm asking you men is just open up, receive what the Word of God is saying, and put it in action. Because a lot of times we, 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 we listen, but we don't put it into action. Amen. So I'm going to encourage you men uh, to uh, open up your uh, souls this morning. So without any further ado, if I don't break up uh, his last name, uh, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, Walter Glamese. I got it. I got done this. All right. Thank you for those kind words. What's up, brothers? Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. Man, it's just before I even get started, oh, so many uh, feelings going on, good feelings, because that right there, the, uh, the baptism tank was when I was baptized in this church when I was 16 years old. And uh, it's been quite a while. And that just, before even, it took over my mind how the Lord is good. And so many people here probably have thought it's a little too late. Your dream's a little too late. Or you're in a situation that I wish I would have changed this. I wish I would have changed that. I'm here to remind you that you're exactly where you need to be. There was this quote I saw that was so interesting. It was actually made me laugh. It said, if you think that, you, that your mistakes, that your rebelliousness has surprised and ruin God's perfect plan for you? Well, let me tell you, my friend, that you're not that powerful. So with that being said, you're exactly where you need to be. And I come before you with trembling and fear, but also I, it, recall, it reminds me when the children of Israel were right before the mountain and the glory cloud and the lightning. Uh, if you guys recall, what did they do? They trembled in fear and ran. And they're like, Moses, you speak to God, you speak to God. So it is an awesome privilege to be in a holy altar that so many times people have taken in common. So my name is Walter Galdames. I thank you so much. I, this was very unexpected, but the Lord has us to be ready in and out of season. And one day, very soon, it's going to be each, each and every one of our turn. It doesn't have to be in the pulpit. It could be it starts at your home. It could be at your workplace. But we're going to get some word today because I, 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 my mind went blank a little bit when I was in the, in the altar. And I just was like, I put the Lord's spirit. Perfect. That's how I want it. Because it's not what you say. It's not what you think. It's what my word says. So I'm probably going to have, I'm going to ask you guys to, well, before uh, I start, of course, I'm going to open up in prayer. And one thing the Lord is, is tired of, and I really feel it in my heart, is that traditional church, that traditional way of thinking. There is a difference, and it's a thin line between discipline and ritualistic uh, uh, attendance. So there's some things the Lord is solid on that he expects us to do on a day to day. But there's other things that he's about to shake. And guess what? If you're here today, if I'm here, that means the shaking already began. And that's a beautiful thing. Because what happens when you when you put light into darkness, it, start, it starts exposing what not only we don't like, we probably don't know it we don't like, but what the Lord does not like. And that's what we want. We want to please the Lord. We want to honor the Lord. And with all glory to God, and back to tie that up before I start in prayer, like no matter what's going on, I'm 38 right now, and I was 16 years old. I left the Lord for like 20 years, even though he never left me. It feels nasty being out of his will. But today, we're going to activate that spirit of, man in, of God in you. We're going to activate it. It might agitate someone, but guess what? That agitation turns into activation, and then we're going to make it happen because we're not living in normal times, and it's time we stop acting like the normal times because they're absolutely not. 
So with your permission, we're going to start up in prayer and then we'll get into the word of God and, and just let the Lord have his will way in each and every one of us today. You may join me. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, knowing, trembling, and fearing before your presence, knowing, God, that you are here present today, that there is no accident, that each and every man is here, Father. I pray that you will open up our hearts, open up our mind, that it would not be my Father will, that it would not be my words, that it would be you flowing through me. The Bible is clear that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will have power, we will have energy, you will give us the ability and capability to do what you have called us before the beginning of the world. So I just pray right now, Father, that any distraction, any heaviness, anything that these men and I walked in here right now, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus because you say to cast your cares on you because you care. And there's also other people all around the world, Father, going through worse things. So I pray right now that we put our pity parties aside, that we put those things that have been holding us down. And once and for all, we leave them in your feet and start to operate in true belief and in true faith. I pray that it will be your words, Father, going through my lips, that it will be your thoughts overpowering my thoughts. And I just pray if there's anything that I have done to offend you, anything these lips, these thoughts, this heart has done or contemplated, I pray right now before my brothers that you may continue to use me and forgive me that this time is your time, Father. It's not my time. It's not Brutalized time. It's not Trinity Church time. It is your time, Heavenly Father. And I pray right now against any distraction. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Without the Holy Spirit, we are nothing. Father, Father God, you deserve all the glory. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to speak with this boldly. And Holy Spirit, thank you so much much for finishing the job that you've given us to do together in unity father we thank you so much for everything you do father in jesus mighty name bless your word give us understanding that only comes through the holy spirit and a willing heart in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen so the, the first uh, verse of uh, you can please join me is going to be hebrews chapter 6 one to three, Hebrews chapter six, one to three. And I will be going through a, a lot of verses, so we're just gonna, I'm gonna ask you for two verses that we'll start off in the rest. You can definitely take, take notes of the scriptures, but I'll go through it fast because there, there is a lot of word that, that God has put in my heart and he'll use me to speak the rest of it. But there is gonna be a lot of word and I thank God for his precious word. So many times we could get caught up in, in in praise, which is awesome, in prayer, which is glorious. But it seems the more that I speak to people, it's something about the word that that which that they seem to just diminish. I'll give five minutes here once a week and see if I can pick it up. And that's what Jesus used to rebuke the devil. Amen. And uh, let's, let's, uh, can I get an amen when most of you are there, please? Praise God. In God's reverence word. Oh God, we read his word with reverence in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's Hebrews chapter 6, 1 and 3. It says, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying of the hands of resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. And then the uh, second verse I would like to open up with will be Galatians chapter 6, 3 through 10. Galatians chapter 6, 3 to 10. And then we could, we, could get, we could continue to get started by the grace of God. Let's get, like I love, like I love to say, let's get it. Let, let, let's let the Lord do what the Lord wants to do. Galatians chapter six, three and ten. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will rejoice in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with his with him who teaches do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatever a man sows is what he will reap for he who sows to his flesh will of his flesh reap corruption but he who sows of the spirit will by the spirit reap everlasting life and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart Therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are in the household of faith. Amen. 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 And uh, 
one thing that I, I aspire to, to be here today is to drop it clear and drop it plain. In the era of so much information that you could just pick up YouTube and find someone to tickle your ears or reinforce your, your theology, or when you have this, this worry or you have this desire, We've, instead of running to the Lord, we run to YouTube. Not everyone, but I'll be the first to admit. Or we call a brother. And all these things are orderly when to get the right information, to see the anointing in someone's life, and to just feed off it, and so we can pass that on. That's biblical. But we have to be running to God. And one thing that I feel right now is the Lord just wants to be crystal clear on what he expects of us. Because so many times, verbiage like grace and faith have been very much abused and they've been very much understood. I definitely believe that we are saved by grace. There is no doubt about it. There is nothing good about me. The only good that I have is the Christ living in me. I get it, I understand that it is a gift and it is the grace of God that we are saved. But the thing is, we, we kind of stop there. What is the gift and what is the grace for? The grace, what is that for? So I would like to start of, instead of just isolating any verses, because that's what a lot of people are doing, they get a verse, they talk about it, and then just elaborate on the verse. I'm here to just go back to God's heart. What is his intention? What is his consistency throughout the Bible? What is his heart? Because yes, there is a consistency in the Bible when we see it from Genesis to Revelation. So there's no need. These, these verses that we get, they're awesome. They're impactful. But what God wants to do is share his heart. Where is his heart? What was his intention of all this? And we have to go back to Genesis. In Genesis, what did Adam have? What did Adam have even before Eve? He had that intimacy with the Lord. He had that one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. He walked in the cool of day with the Holy Spirit. It was God. It was the creation of God. It was animals. And it was that intimacy with the Lord. And with so many people that I talk to, without even knowing, that's what their desire wants. How many times do we hear people say, oh, I'm spiritual. Oh, oh the, the, the universe. Oh, deep down inside, they, they know they need to go back to the original template, which is that intimacy with God, with that, with that harmonical frequency of the universe with our heart, with our mental uh, uh, capacity to be one. And that's where we get the word integrated. It, it comes from, sorry, the word integrity. It comes from the word integrated. What is integrated? To bring everything back to one. Uh, your mind, your body, your, your soul, and your actions are, are one. And that is God's original plan, to be one. It's so frustrating when you want to do something and a week later you do something opposite. Well, guess what? That, that frustration, that, that, that doubt, that, that uncertainty, it's letting you know that something is wrong. God created you to be one with him. God created you to operate in, in, in true oneness with the Lord. So I'm going to definitely go with some other scriptures to go see that so we can just solidify that God, what he lost was that intimacy, that one-on-one, -on -one, that, that, that dependency that I... He doesn't just want to, to be our God. He created us as the temple to be in us, to be in us. And we're going to do this right here. We're going to go to, oh, perfect. When I talked about uh, faith, uh, I'll talk uh, so real quick. Gen Genesis 15, 6. And it talks about that Abraham believed the Lord and was counted to him as righteousness. And then uh, James 2, 23, the apostle James cites this verse saying because of his faith, we, we uh, Abraham became friends of God. You know, yes, of his faith. Who would dare to just put the, their son up to the altar? But what that belief and that faith came with an action. It just didn't end there. And we must go to Genesis 26, 4 and 5. It says, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and give you all their lands and the offspring on your, and your offspring. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Here it comes. Because Abraham obeyed and did everything I required of him, keeping my commandments, decrees, and laws. So we hear all the time, it's because of faith Abraham was saved. Absolutely. That faith that comes with action, that faith that was willing to let anything go down, and he knew God was going to stop him. He, he didn't know how, but he believed. There's some things in our life that we could be confused, that we could be like, why God? Why this? Why now? I don't understand. But guess what? Some things have to be burned up in the altar. Some things have to be let go. But I'm here to remind you and tell you there's some things that God is going to allow you to keep. God is going to allow you to restore and it's going to multiply that blessing. But first, he wants to see if you're willing to put it in the altar. And not just with the lip service, but with actions to say, God, I trust you. This situation is yours. This problem is yours. This is yours. And I will give it to you wholeheartedly. And that's what he wants us to do. 
And we could definitely just see that also with uh, with uh, Moses. We know this famous uh, the Deuteronomy chapter 30, the blessings and the curse. He says, choose today uh, the blessings or the curse. So once again, he said the laws and commandments to keep the laws and commandments, laws and commandments. When David was, was speaking his last words to Solomon, he told him what? Once again, to keep all my laws, be careful to keep all my laws and commandments. When he spoke to Joshua, Joshua 1, 8, he said, meditate on my word day and night. Keep all my laws and commandments. Then I will be with you and, and, and you, I will, don't have fear and, and you will take over lands and think like this and do this. And another thing too is, okay, you could probably say that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. We're now under grace and we're now under the spirit. But then we're going to have a problem with John 14, 15, when Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. So this is what we're doing right here. If there's something in your life that you keep on building and you keep on rebuilding or something that keeps visiting you over and over and over and you ask God, why? Why is this not going away? I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm doing what I got to do. And I'm still going through this. And guess what? The Lord is not, you're not, the Lord is not, you're not waiting on the Lord. He's waiting on you. And if I, if he gave me an analogy or an example of visualization like a construction site in a, and they have their specific blueprints. They have to follow it to the T, get inspections, so forth, and all that good stuff, right? So if something keeps going, they don't keep passing inspection, it keeps tumbling down, everything stops working, is it the blueprint's fault? Or is it the people that for whatever reason they start getting into an argument, they stop working, or they get stressed out, or they say, let me do it this way. And I believe with all my heart, and I'll be the first one with this two-edged sword to have fresh blood on that sword. I know for so many times I've said, you know what, God, I know I could probably do this and I don't really need to fast, even though you said not if you fast, but when you fast. Oh, maybe I could just be in the word just for a little bit. And it's just like, maybe I could just, you know, skip this service or I could stop doing this or doing that. No, no, what was really going on is we're being disobedient. And so many times we're just like, why is this happening? The Lord is here to remind us that when Jesus came, he came to preach the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And what's a little disservice about us is that we're not under a kingdom, but he used that for a reason. Why would he use kingdom? We're just like, oh, it sounds good, a heavenly kingdom. Okay, it is what it is. No, he used that because there was attributes and characteristics of a kingdom that he expects us to learn and expects us to operate in because he used that for a particular reason. And, and, and what, is, what is a kingdom? A kingdom has a king and a kingdom has laws. They're just different laws. And, uh, and that's why when I grew up all the time in here, we're not under the law, we're not under the law. And I hear it so many times subconsciously, it's like, wait a minute, so we're not under no law. There was three laws, there are a little bit more, but three laws that they would fall into the category of, there was a civil law, there was a ritualistic law, and there was a moral law. And yes, we're no longer under the ritualistic law. Yes, we're not, we're not over there getting circumcised on the eighth day. We're not over there killing animals because that would diminish what Jesus came to do. He is our final sacrifice. When he said it is finished on the cross, that perfect work of Jesus, it is finished. It Amen. is done. Amen. But for what? What was it for? To bring us back to the garden, to bring us back to that Holy Spirit. So how, what did uh, Adam lose? The Holy Spirit. What did Jesus say that he needed to leave? So who to return? The Holy Spirit. And here's where it starts to get good. The Holy Spirit is not going to change because our culture has changed. The Holy Spirit is not going to lower his standards wherever uh, the standards have been lowered. One day I was thinking and I was just like, the Ark of the Covenant. I never really thought about it, how, how elaborate and gold and significant it was. And one day I thought in prayer, it said, you know why I had to have that, that object? Because I could trust it. It will be the same tomorrow. It will be the same next week. And my Holy Spirit is not a game. My Holy Spirit is one of the greatest gifts that resurrected the power of Jesus who comes right now and convicts our sin. The Holy Spirit is one who is present in our, in our services and it does the work of God himself. But why have we just said, okay, we're saved by grace. All right, I guess I don't have to live that holy. I guess, I don't, I guess I'm just different. Come on. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit that resurrected Christ, the same Holy Spirit that walked in the cooler day with Adam. It is the same Holy Spirit that God expects us to have in our temple. 
Amen. That's where the grace comes in, my brothers. That's where faith comes in. That's where the beauty of the matter comes in. That no matter what's going on, how many times you've dropped the ball, how many times you said, man, I guess I'm just going to park here. I guess this little hidden sin that I have, no one's ever going to know about. Oh, I guess this is just how it is. I mean, everyone does it, right? No, my friends, brothers, I'm here to tell you that the Lord does expect to come back to a church without blemish or without spotless. One way or another, he is going to get that church. If it's going to come through the cleansing of the tribulation, if it's going to come through the, the events that are so close to come, guess what? He's going to get that Holy Spirit and he's going to get that church that's going to claim God, worship God, and give him all the glory that he deserves. So where does that leave us? Where does that leave that little thing that, that I would battle with for so long that I couldn't be up here trembling in fear and talking so boldly that I gave up on it and said, you know what? Couple, I talked to my brothers and they got this and they got that and I got this. So, you know, I guess it just is what it is. No, that is a lie from hell. God is coming back for a pure church. And he said if he gave us that, that power that resurrected Christ and that power that works within us, Ephesians 3.20, right? It's a very famous scripture. For he who is able to do exceedingly and more abundantly that you can never think, ask, or imagine according to the power that works within us, within us. And if we're not doing things that we, we thought we weren't going to do, if we're not seeing that power, he says when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will have power. If you're not doing that, it's time to question it. One of the things that the Lord really put, put in my heart was to, to memorize. I'll, I'll be jogging or just remember, or, or on the treadmill in Galatians, the, the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit. We're all well familiar with that, the fruits of the Spirit. And I was just like, boom, boom, thinking, you know, I'll be preaching to people. I'll do what I have to do. I'll try my best to die to myself daily. But then it's like, was I gentle today? Was I gentle to my wife? What about when that car cuts me off on the freeway? What about, what about this? What about that? So this is what I'm talking about, the law that I'm talking about, the law of Christ. Law is also known as Torah in Hebrew, which also is another translation of the concordance as instructions. Let's not get timid. Let's not get lost. Let's not get religious. It simply means that God has an orderly instructions in his kingdom. He is not operating in a kingdom, just lawlessness. Now it makes sense. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. For many will come to me that day. Many. Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy under your name, casting out demons and done many miraculous things? And I'll say, I never knew you. Wor worker of iniquity or worker of lawlessness. So there we go. So it's a consistency that the Holy Spirit is holy. The Holy Spirit is going to find a safe place to dwell. If it's not going to be you, if it's not going to be me, it's going to be the people in Africa. It's going to be the people in China. It's going to be the people in Central America that don't even have water, that don't that have to hide from the government. But he is going to get that righteous and holy church one way or another. And we're right here to invite you. We're right here to remind you, to tell you that, 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 that God is with us. God is for us. It's like a currency. It's like a stream. We can't try to flow, even though sometimes we flow. Thank God for that grace. Even though sometimes we, we, we don't have the, the, we can't muster in that power to go to God ourselves. Thank God for our brothers. Thank God for Blue Line. Thank God for the pastors. Man, I love Pastor David. I love Pastor Israel. Pastor David was my, my youth pastor. And Pastor Israel, we were in the youth together. They, they, Pastor Israel, he's now the co-pastor. And I just went to go get beat up by the world. For like 15 years, but I'm glad because I come back here knowing I don't deserve nothing. Knowing that it's all because of him, his glory, his grace, his promises that will stand. His promises will, will stand. So that's, that's really what it is. That it's so much information is going on that we have lost, lost the plain instructions of God. And we're definitely going to go to of, of how to attain these things. And it's going to be things you heard. I'm not over here to change the script. I'm not over here to try to create new laws. I'm over here to remind you why maybe that, that breakthrough hasn't happened. Or, the, or that marriage hasn't been healed. Or those children are still acting the way they're acting. And, and I could be right here with the fresh sword. I, I, I co-parent a 15-year-old girl. And I'm a stepdaddy to a 13 year old girl and I'll just leave it as that it's, it's not the prettiest situation with all these phones with all this with school don't even get me started with what's going on in school and the indoctrination and things of that sort like this fight is real they're after our children they're after our mind they're after our soul and we're just acting like nothing's happening like if we did got a favor oh I came to Blue Line this morning I'm good let me go do what I gotta do after 
Man, okay, I went, I went to church on Sunday. You know, now, 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 now let me see what's going on with the with sports. I got nothing wrong with sports. But I'll be honest with you, there's probably some people right here that know more sports than they know the Bible. And that is when it becomes an issue. And God cannot be mocked. I just like a... a uh, just like when a, a producer or, or when a, a manufacturer, that's the word I was looking for, when a manufacturer creates its product, it can trick the distributors, it can trick the buyers, but you can't trick the manufacturer. The manufacturer knows the optimal performance of its product, and guess what? We could probably trick the pastor. We could probably trick him with attendance, trick even ourselves. We could be self-deceived. The Apostle Paul said, I do not judge nothing before time. I don't even judge myself, because what's the point of saying that I'm right? If I'm not the judge. Mm -hmm. So God wants the optimal performance of his people. He doesn't want it the leftovers. He will not compete with your work. He will not compete with sports. He will not compete with anything that you've put before him. God will not compete with that. So this is what I'm here to that clear message. How frustrating is it when you want to convey something, when you want to talk to someone and just give them a communication, just straight up, be straight up. And they don't understand. They don't get it. It's foggy. It's cloudy. And you're like, this is what I'm saying. I need my people praying like never before. I need my people fasting like never before. I need my people worshiping like never before. But it's like, we got people in other parts of the world worshiping for three, four, five hours. I know a couple other local congregations, big overnight services from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And they're just inviting the Holy Spirit. Yes, it could be done ritualistically. Yes, it could be done incorrectly. But guess what? Does that mean that we're not going to continue worshiping God more than an hour? Does that mean that we're not going to fast? No. It's time that we really grab the horns of the altar and seek God like never before. That is the missing link. That's what I'm here to tell you right now. That situation, that feeling, that person, that, that whatever that thing is, must die in the altar. It must die. And the beautiful part of God is to that stream, to that current, to that river, the river of living waters. That's what he desires, and that's what deep inside we all desire, because that is the original plan of God. And yes, it's been covered, but guess what? Today we're gonna discover it. Today we're gonna just we're gonna just yank it out. And the beautiful part is, guess what? You have the authority, you have the authority, you have the authority. So many times we've gone places and it's just like, okay, sounds good, okay, sounds good, let me pray over me. No, today we're gonna pray with each other. You're gonna declare that it's done. It is what it is. Whatever that thing is that's stopping you, that's stopping you from getting into the word, that's stopping you from fasting, whoever that friend is instead of that wants to encourage you, it's gonna stop today. It's gonna die today because we're gonna pray together and we're gonna leave it in the altar of the Lord because the Lord has had enough. Look what they're teaching our children. I don't got to go into details. You know what they're teaching our children. It's an all-out assault. And remember, the Bible, I think just one time we're referred as Christians. But what are we referred as consistently? Children of God. That we're ambassadors. That, that we are now friends. So in a kingdom, in a kingdom, the kingdom, our Father who is in heaven, what it does a kingdom do as it, as it multiplies? It has colonies. And guess what? Earth is a colony of the kingdom of heaven. So we, what does the colony do? It looks exactly like the kingdom of heaven. The, the word, whatever the kingdom does is a colony. And guess what? Besides the Lord reminding us, though even the word remind, our mind, right, goes so many places. The latest uh, science shows that we uh, think about 60 or 70,000 thoughts per day. They say they're recycled, most of them. But the thing is, how many thoughts are just like, whoa, whoa. So I'm here to remind you to bring you back together, to return, to continue to that rebirth, to remind you to, we have to be in the word. We have to be in the word. There's so much information, so much cloud that it's okay. Just let's keep it simple. If I can engrave something in your heart today is when you look in the mirror before I, I have a thing that I started to do consistently is like before I rationalize, before I start thinking of my next movida, my next move, what does God want, what do I want? They're unauthorized thoughts if I don't pray and I'm not in the word. And we have to throw fast consistently. And I'll be honest with you. Last year, I probably fasted a handful of times, maybe, maybe at most, two hands. And when I say this, I say this to shame myself and for glory to God, glory to God. How did I go a whole year with someone just sitting me down, keeping me put, stop trying to give me this crazy message or crazy sermon and, oh, I want to sound good. I want to connect this to that. Just sit me down and told me, have you fasted? 
Put that in your notebook, put it in your heart, put it in your mind and say, I am going to start to fast. The, they, they asked Jesus, they told him, oh, how come your disciples don't fast? And uh, the disciples of the Pharisees and John do fast. He says, because the bridegroom is still here. But when the bridegroom is gone, they will fast. Mm. So they will fast. And then Jesus says, not if you fast, when you would fast, anoint your head with oil and do not be seen by people so they won't know that you're fasting. So this is a commandment. These are the laws that I'm talking about. These are the laws of Christ. We've been, oh, the laws of bad word. So guess what happened? We have a lawless church, churches. That just think that they can do what they want, whenever they want. They could just go on any YouTube channel. They could just do what they want. And I'm here to remind you, you belong to the King of Kings. You belong to the Lord of Lords. That you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And there is laws. And there are laws for all good. Fathers, is there laws at the house? Is there laws at work? Is there laws when you go into court? Is there laws when you go into the grocery store? Is there laws of the land? So there's laws in the kingdom of God. And the beautiful thing is, they're all written in the word of God. They're all there. What about with Jesus? When Jesus, uh, when Jesus was being tempted 40 days in the desert, what did he do after? What did he do uh, after? He used the word of God as he was being tempted. He was God in flesh. He could have created a new scripture that we use every single day. And we would have been like, this is what Jesus used, so I'm going to use it. But what did he do? He sticked to the blueprint. If Jesus, the Son of God, God in flesh, the, all the create, the King of Kings, who was with the Father in creation, everything was made for Him and by Him and through Him, He stood to the blueprint. Who are we to not to stick to the blueprint? Amen. Guaranteed, he gives us the authority. He gives us the authority that we, we do have power to speak life. Whatever we loosen on earth will be loosened on heaven. Whatever we bound on earth will be bound in heaven. So, of course, I'm not, I'm not telling you to silence that mouth. I'm telling you, let loose. Speak that authority. But after you're in the word, after you're in prayer, after you submit and surrender God's will in your life, Jesus, three times, three times before he got crucified, he said, Father, not my will. If could there be any way that, that the cup will be taken away? But not, not my will, but your will be done. And that's where we need to go back. Not my will, Father. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. And, and, and that's where, where God's heart is. God's heart is that he wants his children back who love him. His children back who, who you, you don't got to preach into wanting to serve him or wanting to come to church that we wake up singing praises we wake up singing glory glory hallelujah that we want to be in his presence we want to but one day this scripture hit me like a ton of bricks and i hope it hits at least even one person like a ton of bricks jesus told the pharisees that there's no room for me in your hearts jesus is not going to squeeze in there the holy spirit is not going to just squeeze in there he's gentle he knocks at your door he knocks at your door but guess what? He expects us to open it. If we're his children, the sheep hear his voice and know the shepherd. So we have to understand what God is saying right now, what he's saying today, what he's saying this week. And there's things that are coming on this earth that are not pretty. And we all feel it deep inside. The book of Revelations, we're living it. And in the first chapter of Acts, when they asked him, are you now going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said, it's not for you to know the time or dates. But we also, in Matthew, he says that you should know just when, the, when it starts to, 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 to a blossom, you will know it's near. So what is going on? is that prepare yourself. It's time for preparation. This is not really just a church service. This is not just a blue line service. This is a, a, a briefing. This is a military briefing. We belong to the army of the Lord and our kids are being brainwashed. Our churches are, are, are falling left and right. There's sin rampant everywhere. This is war. This should get you upset. This should say, if this is upsetting my God, if this is angering my God, it should anger me because why I am his temple. And this should require every single thing out of you. It's not easy. That's why it's easy to just say, you know what, let's quote Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, that we're saved by grace, but then leave out 10, that we were, that grace and that faith is, and that favor, that gift, people have the gift all the time, they walk around with it, hey man, I got a gift from the Lord, I got a gift from the Lord, but guess what, we're opening that gift now, we're opening it, we're going to be back to that first scripture, we're going to walk to that maturity, we're going to grow, we're going to grow, and guess what happens when you grow, it is painful. It is hard. And I'll share my, my experience with you. Man, I'll just say, man, I guess I can't do it. I guess it's too hard. I guess I'll never be free. I guess it is what it is. That no one's perfect. Why did Jesus say be perfect? For I am perfect. We got to go back to those words also in Hebrew and Greek. Now to start our new, no false religion or go, go this or go that way. It means to be complete. 
It means to be whole. It means to be holy. It means to have integrity, to have to be integrated, mind, body, and soul. And that's why when it says, blessed is the man who meditates on the law of the Lord day and night, for he shall be like a tree planted in the streams of water that in due season he shall bear fruit, and everything he does shall prosper. Amen. The, the marketers understand our physiological components. They understand how our brain thinks. The schools understand how our brain thinks. The commercials, they're spending billions of billions of dollars for one minute, but they'll do it over and over and over and over and over. Why do they do this? They got it from the Bible. It's, 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 called, it's a psychological tactic of repetition. God is not being over here to say, mijo, I just want you to be stuck in it. Oh, I want you to be religious. Oh, I just want you to do this. No. We need to meditate on his word. He told Joshua that, David, he told David that. Oh man, we get all, oh man, whoo, talk about David. Like I can't stop with the praises, the lips, praises coming out of my lips. Walking into the throne room with thanksgiving, just dancing, glorifying in the Lord, just being happy. What happened to that feeling when we were just so happy we were saved? We don't wanna be that church that came over here, attended, preached a little bit, but the first love was gone. And we all know how that first love looked like. I wouldn't want to take too much time on that. But when, you're, when you want to be with that person, you can't wait till a service to start. You can't. And the reality of the matter, to keep it real, is not always going to be like that. It is not. That's why we have accountability. That's why we, we have a blueprint. And that's why we have laws that we do. That's why we fast. To kill the flesh. To be obedient. To honor God. What type of, of government, because that's what the kingdom is. It is a government. It's a government that is going to pass Every single government. The Romans, Rome, the Romans have fallen. Greeks have fallen. Persia has fallen. I'm here to tell you that the kingdom of God is never going to fall. Ever, ever. So it's time we get to know those laws and be true citizens and be true ambassadors of that kingdom. Because that is what's going to keep us going. That is what's going get to us, get us to where we need to be. Yep. And I would like to just, just read some of these, these, these verses because, you know, it's the power of the word of the Lord. It says, Joshua 1, 8 and 9, keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditating on it day and night, that you may be careful to do everything that is written. How beautiful is that? We're reading, then we get to Thessalonians, and we get to Ephesians, you know, to put on your whole armor. Did I put on my whole armor today? Did I praise the Lord? Did I fast? You know, we got to see these things. We're battling our mind. Our mind is where the battle really is. And guess what? These marketers know it. Job knows it. The, the, the phones, they definitely know it. We got to do even better what they do. And the devil, I mean, the devil has his way, but guess what? The devil knows his time's up. So that's, I'm not even talking about him already because he's been defeated on the cross. Amen. There is no, there's the only power he has is the power that we give him. That's right. And we're not, it's over. And also the Lord is about restoration. The Lord is about bringing back what has been dead to revive. All this is for what? Why am I saying this? He's simply saying that he wants to revive you. He wants to give you that fire back. He wants to give you that passion back. He wants to give you that, that you don't even have to go witness because your life is a witness. The people, what, does a tree stay unplanted and go everywhere? The tree stays where it's at as the streams take it where it needs to be and people just eat off its fruit. People just eat off its fruit. But we could just go witness here and there, which is awesome, that's a start. But God wants us to be a tree that bears fruit everywhere we go that takes away that okay let's do this this event this event which we need to do it we want to do it but our life should be a walking tree that bears fruit and that's what the lord wants us to do it says then you will be prosperous and successful have i not commanded you look at these words these are military terms be strong courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the lord your god will be with you everywhere you go the good thing about an ambassador, we're called as an ambassador, the ambassador gets the funding, gets the memos from the government, from the kingdom. So it doesn't even have to provide for itself. But here it comes. The ambassador must be about the father's business. The ambassador must be about the interests of the kingdom who sent him. So maybe that's why for, uh, uh, chapter one of James says, if you lack anything, ask and he'll give you. If you ask, if you lack wisdom, ask and he shall give you freely. But when you ask, do not doubt because you will be like the waves of the sea being tossed back and forth. But he says that you ask because you want for your own interest. Mm. How many times that we could just be like, God, do this, God, do this. Is it really the will of God? Is it in the interest of the kingdom? Matthew 6, 33, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. 
These are very plain terms. That's why my, 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 my purpose here this morning was not to get all deep, not to get all confusing, not to get, I want it to be clear because there's so much we're hearing, so much that is going on in our brain, so much that is going on in our mind, that it's almost like the desert that we have, the 40 year desert, it's information. That's our 40 year desert. It's like, okay, this, 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 this. And it's just like, man, how many times have I been on my knees? How many times have I been with a brother and be like, hey man, let's, let's go pray over here. Let's go pray to the mountains. And, and I'm telling you, I'm, the Lord smacked me so many times. I've talked to so many people. And it's just like, when did you just call him and say, man, let's go through the word. Let's go through the word. That's what changes people. How many times do we call a brother and say, hey man, let's go through a couple chapters together and let the word do what the word does, what the word will continue to do. So it could get a little loud and the Lord just wants to hone it down. And have his creation back. Just like a father, like my 15-year-old. Uh, she started, she got into a point of 13, 14. Man, it's, I see it everywhere. Unfortunately, like eyelashes, nails. And I was just, when I would go, because I co-parent, I would just, just, and there's a way also, right? There's a way of, of, of doing God's will in gentleness. That's why the, the, the spirit of God gives us our truth. But guess what? For a while, I wasn't operating and I was mad. I was like, what are you doing? What are, guess what? She's like, oh, here comes dad. He's going to talk to me about Jesus and tell me that I have eyelashes and nails. That was not, that was not being effective. We don't want to be spineless neither. Ain't no, ain't no spineless person over here. But we have to be effective. So why did I bring this up? I was driving around, driving around, and I just started pouring and crying and crying, crying and crying. And at that moment, everything went away. Like, I didn't care about her eyelashes. I, can't, I just remembered when she was just such a baby and so innocent. And then the Lord, I felt the Lord, the Lord told me, now you understand me. It's not about this, it's not about that. I want my children back. I want them back in my presence. I want them back under my wings. I want them under my covering. That's it. That's the message of God. That's the message of Jesus. That's the job of the Holy Spirit to restore us, to return, to bring us back to the garden, to bring us back to when we were walking with Jesus, when we were walking with the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit lived with us. Let's not be that people that the Holy Spirit has to, is he gonna snap today? Is he gonna watch that thing he shouldn't be watching? Is he gonna be doing this? Is he gonna be doing that? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gets quenched. The Holy Spirit gets quenched. It's not just this cosmo, just, just, just nubilist thing, just, just something out of space. It is the Spirit of God. It is real. It is alive. And that's who, who's going to give us the strength and the energy and the courage and that power. When we connect our phones, right? We connect our phones and we plug it in. It's at 100. I see it, right? It's 100. We're rocking. We're going. We don't even, we're not even thinking of a church. We're not. We're just like, we're good. We're, let's do our thing. And unfortunately, that's what happens. It happened to me. And I know it happens to a lot of people. And I know it's happening to some people today. That's why I'm speaking like this. We forget to go plug in. We forget to go fast. We forget to go pray. We forget to just go be like, Father God, uh, no matter what I thought last week, remember, uh, we, we think about 60 or 70,000 thoughts per day. So guess what? When you start believing those that's thinking, thinking, it follows you the next day. And now neuroscience also tells us, I mean, science is barely catching up to the Bible. That's really what's going on. They're barely catching up. Every time you make a decision, it connects, it connects neurological pathways, meaning straight up that when you're stressed or you're feeling this thing, if you don't run to God and you run to that other thing, not only are you getting a spiritual stronghold, you're programming your brain to continually to do that. It's, that's why it's so hard. It's a habit. But guess what? The moment you just say enough is enough, it stops right here. When I'm stressed, when I'm worried, I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray, I'm going to call someone. Guess what? Your brain starts catching up and it all connects. That's when we get godly integrity, when we're truly integrated and we are one. We're one with our mind, one with our heart, one with our actions, and one with our father. And that's what he wants. And that's what he's going to get. And the beautiful thing is, that's why we're here a uh, couple of things too, like the word belief, right? It says those who believe shall be saved. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. That is awesome. That is beautiful. Let's go to it real quick in, 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 in the Hebrew. It's the word aman, just like a man, but with an A, aman. It is Strong's number 539, which literally means to be firm or sure. To be firm or sure. So how beautiful, just I, I started to do that, is like if I'm not firm, I don't believe. 
So how easily do we say, oh, I believe, I believe. But if I'm not firm, do I truly believe? Not according to the Bible's consistency, not to the, the from, from Genesis to Revelation that he's looking for that church that the gates of hell will not prevail. That church is going to be firm. That church, when it starts to pray, when it starts to talk, when it starts to lay hands on people, demons start fleeing. Demons starts moving because, oh man, this person has been with God. This person has been with Jesus. So much information going on here that so many people, that's, they think that's a prerequisite. You know, let me go get my little degree. Let me come over here and preach. Awesome. God's going to work on them too. God's a restoring God. God is a loving God. But he's going to use people like us. People like us that know that we don't deserve it. Why did he go out and get the fishermen? Why did he go out and get Mark and Matthew? There was, there was a lot of believing uh, people that knew the word of God. He could have got them. Which then eventually Paul converted a lot of early Jews and things of that nature. But why did he, why did he start with those 12? Because they were willing to be taught. They were willing to be taught. The disciples asked Jesus, how can we understand the mysteries of, of, of the kingdom? And, and they don't. He goes, because you guys have left everything to follow me. You have left families. You have left this to follow me. And the kingdom of God belongs to you. So what a privilege. What a privilege that we're being called. What a privilege that we have the, the, the power and the calling to come back to God. Not only our life, but we're a tree. So many other people are going to come back to us and it's not in our time it's in God's time and, and that's that's really let's get to some verses right it says Romans 30 to 31 you know a, a lot of the law the law sounded like the Old Testament Romans 30 to 30, Romans 3 30 and 31 check this out since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith do we then nullify or get rid of the law by this faith not at all Rather, we uphold the law. Like, what? How come we don't hear that all the time? You know, maybe we will have a church that will be more prepared for, for, for Jesus' return. Even though he already found a place to those who, who sacrifice and pick up the cross daily, deny themselves and follow them. He is already here. But if we were to hear that more often, then maybe we realize that we're not just floating around the clouds. That God did leave us instructions. He did leave us some. What kind of a father would just expect something from their kids? And not give them clear instructions. So back to the message of why I started here. And with the, the, the thick message I felt in my heart that has transformed my life. That has started to give me transformational power. And just do the work of God in the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. To understand we do have laws. It's not, it's not if. if. If I'm not fasting, I'm being disobedient. There's no other way of doing, going around it. He says, if you fast. I mean, I'm sorry, when you fast, not if you fast. He says, my disciples will fast when I'm gone. Come on, let's keep it real, guys. If we're not fasting, are we disciples? I didn't come over here to, to drop the hammer on you, but I just came to drop the mirror, and guess what? That mirror is catching me too. There's no way I can speak like this. Do you know how many trials this couple, when they told me I was gonna speak? How many things that just started coming left and right? Like even people in the, I'm not gonna go into details, but someone really trying to fight me when I'm driving? Like, bro, like, chill. <laughs> like, you know what, trying to fight you, I'm about to preach. <laughs> like, you know, but it's just all hell broke loose. But it's a beautiful thing to withstand that. So when I told one of my brothers that, like, when the fiery dark comes, not if it comes, when it comes, like, well, you got to be bold. Like, it hurts. It hurts, Lord. It hurts. You yank it out and you throw it out in the name of Jesus. Instead of, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, what's going on? What's going on? Because we haven't been prepared. We haven't been fasting. We haven't been praying. And that, that's what we want. That's what we want. Galatians 6, 2. Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. When, when it talks about the armor of God, it, it talks about, it was replicating the Roman soldier, right? The helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the bell of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the preparation of the gospel of peace. I was reading this book by, by Derek Prince. It's called... Uh, Spiritual warfare. I never even thought about it. I just thought recite those all the time. It's cool. You're not gonna arm. I'm ready to go. And he said, the armor doesn't cover the back. That's right. I never thought about that. Because with this fight is to be fight head first. This fight is supposed to be going on. Yes, I'm going through pain. Yes, I thought God was gonna change my situation by now. Yes, I thought I was gonna be free by now. But guess what? I'm gonna stand firm in the things of God. I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna keep on trying. I'm gonna keep on doing it. I'm not gonna let the stinking thinking from yesterday hold me down today. We're not gonna put no new, new wine on old white skin. So that's what we do 
where we take, yes, God is like, okay, I forgave you. Okay, you confess it. Okay, I'll give it up to you. Okay, you're free. Okay, you're, you're, you're free. But then here we go thinking about it again, again, again. So then therefore we don't believe and then therefore we're not truly firm. God wants us to be firm. God wants us to be firm in his word, be firm in his promises. And just his word will not be stopped. His word will not be stopped. 2 Corinthians 11, 2. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband to Christ so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. Ephesians 5, 27. And to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any blemish but holy and blameless. Revelation 19, 7. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Does that mean you have to make yourself ready? Absolutely. But when you're standing still and you're getting scrubbed and you're getting scrubbed or you're in the fire and it's hot, that's what happens with a living sacrifice. We can just step out that fire. But I'm here to remind you to remain in that fire no matter what's going on, any pain, any hurt, any delayed promises, any victories that you're not getting in your life. Maybe because you're not firm in believing God that he's going to do it at his time, not in your time, not in my time, not in the pastor's time, in your time. And if we want to see where God's heart is, it's obedience over sacrifice. The Holy Spirit wants somewhere safe to dwell. The Holy Spirit wants somewhere safe. He doesn't want to think, one day you're going to act like this, next week you're going to act like that. And how are we going to get this? By being in the Word. Don't make it a casual thing. Being in the Word, praying and fasting. That's how we're going to get that. And I would like, before I close, to, to pray. Can I leave my brothers in a prayer? And everyone, for the reverence of God, if we could please stand up. And we're gonna we're gonna unite in prayer. And guess what? Like I don't think we even have time to pray for you today. We I know we all belong to churches. I don't know. We leave that to Pastor Alex. But I know one thing: that you have the power to confess it. You have the power to declare it. It is from you. God doesn't want you to be dependent on a preacher. He doesn't want you to be dependent on a ritual. He wants you to be dependent that you can walk boldly into the throne of grace and have that access yourself. So whatever that is in your heart and in your mind, let's declare it. Let's believe that God is here. His Holy Spirit is here. And you're going to walk out a little bit different when we come out. So with God's, God's Holy Spirit being here, then let's, let's get into prayer. Let's get into spiritual warfare. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, knowing, God, that you have predestined this day before the foundations of the world that we could be true witnesses of you, that no man will have an excuse while their, while their buildings keep on falling, while their breakthroughs don't come, while that joy or that peace, that first love has gone. We are the ones that have failed you, Father. I am the one that has failed you. And I pray today, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would just revive those that spirit, that spirit that loves you, that spirit that's after your own heart like King David, that spirit that's a warrior like Joshua. And I just pray right now, Father, against anything the devil is trying to do to rob that seed, that seed that's going to bear fruit, that seed for your righteous kingdom. I rebuke Satan in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any hurt, any pain, anything that has happened to my brothers from, from marriage to their children to disappointments to at this point they thought they would be doing this, they would be doing that. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will release and activate that holy man that's within him. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus I speak life to my brothers father that they will walk out of here knowing that the reason that you wanted to drop it so clear is that you've been fighting and it's time for that breakthrough. It's time that they apply those principles that you will not change for no man that you want us praying. You want us fasting. You want us worshiping in the middle of our trials and then those, those, those jails will be broken and then those blessings blessings will come. Then, Father, forgive us if we haven't been thankful for the things we have now. Forgive us if we have thought of other things, Father, that is not your kingdom, because your kingdom is first. The Bible wants us to, to, to even love, our, love you more than our children. What does that even mean? That means you have the best intention for us and our generations. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us, Father, anything that we have believed, anything that has been cemented in our heart and mind that we can't let go of this, we can't let go of that. That's just who I am. That's just my character. No one's perfect. I rebuke that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I pray, Father, that we will walk out of here bold. We will walk out of here bold, just like the Apostle Paul when he came out of jail. He, nothing could stop him. I pray that when we walk out of here that we believe and unite in faith and the spirit of God is activated in each and every one of my brothers. I pray that the rest of the day, Father, that they will meditate, that they will get in the word themselves and scream, Father, what do you want? What can I do for you, Lord? 
And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus that they will bring this joy, this happiness, this firmness. You want us firm, Father. You want us firm. You don't want us one way this way or one day this way. That we'll walk and be a blessing to our children. Be a blessing to our spouses. Be a blessing, Father, to our neighbors. Be a blessing to those, Father, that we don't just put on an armor and take on an armor. That we walk in your purpose. That you live in us, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I just pray, Father, that I pray blessings, Father. I pray this supernatural strength. Those who need to be recharged that right now, if they're receiving it in the mighty name of Jesus, that they're being recharged, that their, their, their thoughts and the dreams that come from you, Father, will be made alive, that you came to revive what was dying. We're not dead. You came to revive it. And in Jesus' mighty name, we walk out of here knowing that you visited us today and you did your part. I did my part. It's time that my brothers do their part and I will continue Amen. to fight side by side because I'm the last person who deserves to be here. But I have picked up my call. I have believed in your promises and I know that your blood is more sufficient than all my mistakes. And in Jesus Christ's name, be with us, be with our families and let us, Father, just never want to go away from your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Oh, 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 oh,